Let's kill some more babies. everybody, how is it going? Good to see you all again, and I am so glad to have you here. A few days ago, I got a very important business email to my business email that's meant for very important business. And it said that this Let's Go Baby game got an update. You know, I would have preferred a sponsorship offer, maybe. You know, I'm not below Raid Shadow Legends, but it's, 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 it's fine. It's fine. Let's Go Baby is a game that performed very meh on my channel to begin with, but then people loved it. The game got one final expansion, and it's actually pretty interesting. It's really not what I expected whatsoever. If you didn't watch the first video, do. Okay, now that I farmed a few views, I'll do a quick recap. In the first game, you spawn in this mysterious world said to be an abandoned MMO from long ago. Every player is a poorly animated polygonic baby free to run around and play. However, searching just a little further reveals a much deeper secret. We find these shadow figures who slowly reveal a story about our lives. We aren't just babies, we're dead babies. In a previous life, got poisoned with cyanide and forever live in this purgatory. The game ends with a mysterious man known as Daddy approaching us, dragging us towards some unknown doom. We have no idea where this led, but maybe the expansion Let's Go Baby Suffocation will give us a little bit of insight on where we went. So without further ado, let's see a little more dead babies. Yeah, yeah, okay, we'll stick with that. We spawn in the same hub world as we did in the previous game, except everything's very apocalyptic. The whole world has this cryptic red hue and much of the world is missing. It leaves me with this weird feeling that everything just suddenly became abandoned. The graves that were once in the spawn are now gone and the floor just seems to be some monotone wood. If we take a walk down to the playground area, it's the same exact thing. Gazing into the distance, we can see an ocean filled with colossal dead babies. Man, okay, hold on. I gotta watch my words here a little bit. YouTube's gonna demonetize me very quickly. One, two, three, four decapitated babies. Blood erupting out of, the, out of their necks. So before adventuring to see what the next expansion holds, I thought it would be a good idea to check out the old aspects of the game first. The sewer room is now locked up and trying to enter daddy's room does this. Uh, what? Five decapitated babies. Yeah, our uh, head explodes. But but don't 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 worry. It's not dead. It it slowly grows back. There's no more dead babies here. Uh, no dead babies. I saw that one of the shadow people from the previous game was watching over us in the spawn. The wall seemed a little too high to jump on top of, but I'm fully aware of how often walls can be walked through in this game. My thousand IQ brain just simply clipped through the wall, and I could jump up and talk to the shadow. In the previous game, we could communicate with the shadows and they responded with noises that had to process through a spectrogram. It was a lot of very annoying work that I did not feel like dealing with whatsoever. However, luckily for us, the developer was very kind to include a processor in the game so we could speak to the shadow and actually see it on our screen. This one says the following. I spent so many hours doing exactly what they asked me, tweaking models just right, following every stupid fucking trend that they pushed on me in the name of staying relevant, just so they could scream at me and force me to do overtime to get it right this time. So what does this mean? Well, this was somewhat of a surprise to me as the original Let's Go Baby game had no fourth wall breaks from the developer. It was simply a story about not alive children and a weird fetish with some daddy character. However, now in this game, we seem to explore a story about the developer and unfortunately his struggles to try and please a crowd. A new structure found in this expansion is the baby teleporting. Looking at the patch, there's a list of instructions in the form of code, but luckily for you, I'm somewhat of a little computer scientist myself. Anything with these slashes are comments and everything else is code. Up top, we see that if a baby interacts with the teleporter and we hold either three or more blocks, we can get teleported somewhere else. The rest are instructions on how to get those blocks, but some important keywords are scratched out. 
However, after staring at it for a little bit, I can somewhat make out the gist of what to do. Step 1 says something about trying to access something that has to do with daddy. I mean, I think we already kind of figured this part out. After triggering that event, we have to approach the statue and do the angry aura. And luckily for us, there's only one statue in the game, so I think I know exactly what to do. After getting teleported, we can see that another shadow lurks in the corner of this room. Talking to him just adds to the story of the frustrated developer behind this game. We find out that he has a brother named Michael who is rather well off in his welding career. The family often praises the brother and looks down upon the developer as a screw up for choosing a non-lucrative career path. Walking through the hallway takes us down a very tight and narrow esophagus as we fall through the mouth of a creature. We can see weird flesh and teeth coming out from the walls. And between all of this lies the first block for us to collect, as well as an exit to leave the room. If we take a look at the second set of instructions, we're told to enter the sewer and speak with the shadow. This will somehow lead us to cube 2. While walking down and speaking to him gives us a rather confusing set of instructions. The shadow says, It's already over, but that doesn't mean you have to give up. Stand atop this structure and give them Disco Inferno. Well, the structure was very easy to find. It's literally on the other side of the playground with a huge crystal just shining atop. But let me tell you, it took me forever to figure out whatever the hell that Disco Inferno was. It's not the name of any setting or aura, and let me tell you, I tried everything. I felt like an idiot spending like half an hour trying to make a headless baby make random noises on top of a pyramid. It wasn't until I was all out of ideas that I decided, what the hell, let's dance. And eventually it worked. We got brought to a grim world with purple skies as giant shadows with long limbs watched over our player. At one end was a tomb that read goodbye baby, however we are able to jump outside of this ditch and find a shadow hiding deep in the corner. This one speaks on how the developer has been struggling to find jobs in game development. He wants to prove his parents wrong so badly, but he's been having no luck. Eventually he found a job, but it was terrible, subtly suggesting that it was actually the let's go baby game. He then mentions that he decided to add some small spooky elements as a little troll to get revenge on the team. If you recall, the story for the original Let's Go Baby game never had any horror elements. It was simply just this supposed cancelled MMO that when explored a little bit further had these weird obscure game additions. This message from the shadow is probably the closest we're ever going to get to uncovering the fictional story of why this happened and what prompted it. Walking into the tomb leads through another stomach type area that holds our second well desired cube. We can activate it and jump back to the spawn. The instructions for the final cube just tells you to look around the spawn area. I guess you can turn around and spend hours looking, but if you walk literally right behind the teleporter, you can see arrows pointing out that leads to another door. Walking through here leads to some aquatic paradise. We find ourselves shrunk and swimming in a fish tank, being watched over by a gigantic baby. Fish and sharks are swimming all around, however, there isn't much to do. We can find a shadow who finally gives us some information on the daddy photo we have been seeing throughout the two games. The developer said that he grabbed a picture of his boss on vacation and decided to take some artistic liberties. Yeah, well, I, I guess he did that, huh? He wanted to use his boss's image to be the downfall of the baby game and watch as his face was smacked across various news articles reporting on the obscurity of the game. If it isn't obvious yet, Let's Go Baby is the sequel prequel. We had this obscure, mysterious game that had no answers, and now we understand everything. There was never any plot of dead children. It was a troll from an underappreciated developer who hated his boss and wanted his game to fall down to oblivion. We can activate the last block and go to the teleporter. It got out, moms protesting at the front doorstep of the office, all sorts of shit hitting the windows at odd hours of the day. It won't be long now. The boss will find out it's me. I'm sure the checkout line will be more than happy to see me.
Thank you for coming this far. I'm sorry it's not what you expected in the end, but sometimes that's how life is. I don't regret what I did. Sure, working at Blimpo's isn't great, but at least I get good dental now. I guess that's what you call a bittersweet ending, huh? Don't cry because it's over. Smile because it happened. Goodbye, baby. Wow, that was an oddly unexpected turn for the game. I'll be honest, I didn't quite enjoy the first one. I thought it was a very weird and obscure game, but it had no story. It just seemed like I thought, all right, let's just throw a bunch of weird elements in and call it a lost MMO. The whole theme of a canceled MMO was obviously fake, and it just seemed like a quick way to throw an unsettling twist on a seemingly kids-friendly game. However, I'm glad to see that Let's Go Baby Suffocation made it something more. It told the story of a struggling developer who tried to prove himself. Often, it seems as if the phrase, I make games for a living, gets met with instant criticism. I'm not a game developer, but I feel the same way about YouTube. I love it, it's my passion, but I constantly feel like I'm getting judged whenever I tell people that I make videos. However, I will say that this game seemed to get very specific at certain points. Between the business Blimpos and his brother being a welder, it first seemed to me that the real creator of the Let's Go Baby games, Fever Dream Johnny, was modeling the story after his own. I wanted answers, so I reached out to him on Twitter. I asked Johnny if the story was based off his real life experiences with game development, and he replied. He said, The story is based on the experiences of my friends who have been in the game industry. None of it really reflects on my experiences, unfortunately. I was also really curious if this overarching tale of a struggling developer was the story from the start, if this sequel was the plan from the beginning. Johnny said, The idea was made after the original game. Kind of wanted a conclusion that didn't play too much into the daddy stuff since it was entirely improvised and wasn't meant to be taken as seriously as it was. When I heard this, I actually immediately thought how well it fits to the theme of the story. Fever Dream Johnny is a fantastic developer. I highly recommend checking out some of his games and I'll leave links to his socials in my description. The original Let's Go Baby game was covered somewhat well and in terms of indie games from small developers achieved good success. However, it was an entirely improvised joke from Fever Dream Johnny. He then decided to make a conclusion that added a level of seriousness and didn't rely too much on a mysterious figure named Daddy. The bitch of it is, I haven't seen anyone playing this game. I literally found out through a business email. If you search up Let's Go Baby Suffocation on YouTube, you will find one playthrough. I do hope this will change, but until then, here's to hoping. Big thank you to Fever Dream Johnny. Thank you so much for the words that you said about the game and even making the games in general. I hope we can cover a few more games from him in the future, but until then, so long.